So what I'm going to do here is um, jump over to our automation software Fond and do a quick little demonstration. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate how we can get quite a long way with some very simple rules and simple data. So this is Fond. I've just got a blank account here with no projects in it. I'll create a new project. All right, so I'll give that project a name, webinar one, and I'm gonna select an architecture. So I'll talk a little bit more about architectures in a moment, um, but I'm gonna use an architecture that's fairly common um, where we've got a, a cabinet with 288 ports and connecting out to eight port terminals or closures. I'll talk more about this architecture in a moment. Uh, for now, I'll just save that the next step is I'm going to get some input data. Um, the input data is going to determine where Fond is going to run the fibers to and the potential paths that it can take to run that fiber. I'm going to source the data using Area Select. And Area Select is a feature in Fond that uh, we use to connect users with the data that they need to generate a design. So any uh, patch on the map here is where we currently have data. Anywhere in the United States we can source data for um, and that's just part of a subscription that users, users get access to this. So I'm going to jump in, um, go down to Illinois, maybe Monticello, or I'm going to, yeah, Monticello. All right. So to use Area Select, all I do is just draw a polygon. Um, and this polygon just needs to surround the the neighborhood that we're interested in designing, the neighborhood of, or the town. I'm just going to use a small section of Monticello at first. All right, so we've got 464 homes in this little polygon. Um, I've imported the addresses, but I've also imported the underground path. That's these orange lines. So once I've imported that, I'll uh, draw the central office location. So this could be where we're placing the OLTs, um, but it could also be um, a tie-in point uh, to the network, to an existing network. And now I'll go ahead and hit Generate Design. So what Fun's doing here is it's taking all of the address points and it's taking all of the underground path and it's considering all of the different ways that it can connect each of those homes back up to the central office via that cabinet through the 1x32 splitters. And it's following a set of rules to do that. It wants to minimize the total amount of equipment but it needs to do that while maintaining that maximum drop distance of 750 feet. So that's the distance from the address to the terminal. Uh, no more than eight homes per terminal. And then no more than 288 homes connecting back up to that cabinet. And that cabinet's got the splitters in it. Um, so once it's chosen the location of all of those cabinets, it's going to connect those cabinets back up to the central office. And again, it's going to try to do that <clears throat> in a way that minimizes the total amount of cable. And then once we've created the whole design, uh, Fond will go through and uh, count up all the different materials and come up with a little cost. So uh, that design's now finished. So that, that was just a really simple design. Um, this is the sort of design that will get you halfway there on the way to that constructible design. This design's good for a feasibility study and the feedback we get is it's good for around 10% um, estimation. All right, so what I just showed was how to create a feasibility design. Um, so all we gave to the software was the underlying data along with a basic set of rules. So that's fine for a feasibility design, but for a high level design, we need to be able to give it more information. The engine needs more information. And often that information is given by fixing the input data. Um, so in that example, I just used underground data. Often that's all that's available. Aerial strand, aerial strand and pole data isn't always available. Um, and so sometimes street center line designs can be a good way to get started. They can be used as the basis for a walkout guide or for estimating um, footage. Uh, and then you can use that design then to, to walk out and collect information on where your poles are. Uh, a common question I'd get just after doing a design like that is usually something like, um, you know, can I use my own data or the data from a utility company or electricity co-op for a feasibility design? Uh, my answer is almost always yes. So data from co-ops tends to be quite good. 
Um, if it does need to be cleaned, we try to give you the tools that you need to clean it. So you can usually do that yourself, but then we can also, um, you can use automation and scripts to clean it more quickly. Um, but yes, generally that's that pole and strand data and underground cable electric data uh, that you get from co-ops or utilities can be used for, for feasibility designs. Um, and when that happens, those designs can be extremely accurate because the underlying data is already so good. 